Hey Lawn Care Nation, in this video I wanted to talk about having terms of service set up for your lawn care business. So uh, here where I'm from in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we're getting sort of to the mid uh, waypoint of the lawn care season. Uh, it's mid-June and we've had a lack of rain already uh, for uh, quite a bit and uh, lawns are already starting to dry out. So I had a, a question from an Instagram follower asking, uh, how are you managing slower growing lawns or justifying weekly cuts with no growth. I'm probably going to a bi-weekly soon, but even some of my clients are telling me to not come at all until they call me. I explained that I will do bi-weekly and that they are paying for a spot much like a daycare. What are your thoughts? Well, that's exactly uh, what I've dealt with uh, for the past 18 years in my lawn care business. It always seems to be the same story uh, when you get to this uh, point in the season. And uh, it's why over the years I've developed uh, those terms of service. So uh, what I mean by that is just having sort of a set of rules uh, that apply if a customer is going to hire you. Uh, so whatever the case may be, you can have uh, things to sort of outline uh, what happens if there's dog waste, if there's service charges that apply. Uh, in that case, if you have a cancellation policy and what your uh, mowing schedule uh, is like. So for example, in my lawn care business all lawns are a weekly mow I don't do uh, bi-weekly or 10 days uh, or you know monthly mows or one-time mows or anything like that so I have a service that I came up with that I call uh, a weekly as needed service and what I mean by that is that uh, the lawn sort of growth patterns uh, will dictate uh, how often it gets mowed uh, in the uh, summertime so here in the Pacific Northwest because we normally get a bunch of rain uh, most homes do don't have irrigation systems. So when you get some odd um, you know, situations like we we're having this year where we're having a lack of rain or in the previous year where we had a long summer, a long drought, um, that can sort of uh, you know, have a negative effect. So in my business, I tell all clients that it's a weekly mow from the beginning of March until the end of June. And then from July and August, uh, it all depends on their lawn's growth, but bi-weekly mowing is the minimum service charge. So about 50% of my lawn will continue on a weekly basis those are lawns that do have irrigation and uh, do fertilizing and all that sort of stuff and then that other 50% uh, are lawns that I'm just there for cutting they don't do fertilizing they don't do any of that and those ones will go to a bi-weekly basis during that summer uh, period there of uh, July and August now traditionally in September, the rain comes back and lawns green up and then they all go back to a weekly mow uh, without exception for uh, September and October. So having that sort of uh, terms of service laid out and what I do is when I'm quoting new clients is I include that terms of service in their original estimate and I do something a little bit different I don't do uh, paper estimates or things like that I do all my estimates over email so even if uh, I'm uh, at a customer's property and I'm meeting that client face to face I don't ever tell them what the price is gonna be I just say I will email them a quote later that evening what I like about this is that it has uh, those terms of service written down and it's in writing and it can be referred back to in the future so I have a template that I set up uh, and uh, I just copy and paste it from the notes app in my phone and I set it up uh, in an email. I just change the prices around and in that sort of top portion, it has sort of, uh, you know, I came by, did an estimate. Here's the prices for the services that you requested. I can tweak little changes and do uh, whatever it is uh, that I need to do with that. But that bottom part of the estimate includes uh, all of those terms and service, including a cancellation policy, uh, and uh, you know all of those extra fees and charges that they may expect over the course uh, of this season and I find that uh, with that you know it's not going to get rid of customers uh, kind of uh, you know asking you to not mow a lawn because of uh, the weather drying out and stuff like that but it allows me then to sort of gently remind them of uh, those terms of service that they agreed to because the other thing I do is um, in that original estimate for me to for them to hire me essentially uh, I require two things uh, they have to reply to that email saying for me to go ahead 
and they also have to provide me their credit card number on file and I do all of the billing uh, with their credit card number on file so uh, by them uh, you know replying to that email uh, they're essentially agreeing to all of those terms of service and you know then I have sort of that in writing showing uh, the original estimate with the terms of service and then them agreeing to that so when I gently remind them about that uh, they have a change of attitude and they understand uh, so then I also uh, just tell them as well that uh, you know I can understand their concern that uh, you know in their eyes it may not uh, look like a cut is justified at the moment uh, but uh, you know I have them think back just a few weeks uh, to the early spring uh, when lawns were growing like crazy like they always do here in the Pacific Northwest and I'm you know at a property you know maybe three times longer uh, than I normally uh, would be and the amount of grass that I'm having to deal with and uh, I say you know no in you know at that time of year your price always stays the same regardless of whether I'm working three times longer than I was to get that first cut done I never increase your cost uh, and at no time has a customer ever, uh, you know, uh, during that time of year come out and said, hey, it looks like you're working a, a lot longer than normal. Let's, uh, you know, make sure you get paid more than, uh, uh, you know, you're charging us. That never happens. So uh, it's one of those things I tell them that, you know, those summer cuts, although uh, it may not seem justified in their eyes, it balances out that extra t time that it took uh, to mow in the spring when their cost is always the same because of course um, you know if you were to go to uh, somebody's house to do an estimate and they asked you how much it costs and you said you know it depends on you know how what the grass looks like this week every week your price is going to be different nobody would hire you they all want to know an exact price so the only way to be able to do that is uh, for you to know exactly how often you're going to be cutting it within reason and that's why I say it's a weekly cut for everybody in the spring and fall and in the summer you know I know that there's a minimum uh, service going to be every two weeks and that's how I can control uh, those costs and give them a firm estimate uh, on um, you know how much it costs to mow their lawn. So hopefully that uh, answers that question. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys do uh, when it comes to uh, sort of service re frequency or when uh, clients are uh, starting to come up uh, during sort of those uh, slower growth periods and uh, you know trying to get you to skip lawns or uh, trying to have you mow the lawn on uh, you know sort of a as needed basis when they're calling you. Uh, and if you have uh, terms of service or any sort of a uh, lawn care agreement set up in your lawn care business. So that's it for this one, guys. Uh, check out one of these other videos up here in the corner that YouTube's algorithm has identified as something that you may be interested in. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.